Welcome to Our Star Speak. My name is Christina Miner. I am the host of this podcast. And before we begin, I'd like to give a disclaimer. We are merely here just to give some information about our stories and to share with everyone what we have gone through. We are not here to give any suggestions or advice um, outside of your medical team at all. We encourage you to utilize any information that you have received from them and you are listening at your own discretion. Well, tonight, my guest is Debbie Feast. I'm so excited that she's up here. Debbie, I we call each other flatties. Um, we met each other, what was it, about a year, a year ago? In March. So, In March. Yeah. yeah, that was the first time we actually met, but we communicated a lot through Facebook and different things like that. And we're in some of the same groups. And I'm so thankful that she has joined me tonight. Thank well, you thank you for inviting me. I'm excited. A little nervous, <laughs> but excited. Just relax, girl. It's like sitting on the couch or sitting yes. at a restaurant like we were and talking. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yes. So, And this is your story. And that's what it's all about. It's about you sharing your mental and physical scars about what you've been through. And your story is so impactful. Um, and I have. I've had a lot of uh, guests that were have been on that are under the age of 51, but cancer can happen at any age. And everyone has a story to tell. So this story tonight is very, very important and dear to me because for you to make some of the decisions that you made was um, absolutely phenomenal because some people would have been scared. So I just want to thank you for that. And without further ado, Debbie, who is Debbie? Tell us all about who you are. How do you describe you? Well, um, I do love the beach. My husband and I love the beach. We actually do want to move to Florida one day. Um, I love hanging out with my friends. Um, I love gardening. I actually just started planting my seeds in my in-house um, greenhouse in, in, the, in the basement. Um, and I love being around my friends and just, um, I, I've been more social, I think, since I went through cancer than I was before with my friends. I think it, um, you know, made anyone realize that, you know, you got to be more together with your friends and, you know, take time with your friends and your family. And um, yeah, so still love the beach, still want to go to move to Florida. Um, one day, hopefully that'll happen. But and I work, I still work. I've been working for the same person for t over 25 years. So um, I'm an executive assistant and I work part time now. So I'm more into hopefully doing more and more of what I want to do. Right, right. Yeah. And yes, you love hanging. And I, I love your um your Instagram posts and your well, your Facebook posts that I see a lot with your friends because yeah. I think community, I would have to say one of the you're one of the top people that I know. Like you really have a good community of people. Oh, and my friends are awesome. My yeah. friends, my friends from um years ago, my friends from high school, my um just uh, just friends from work. Um, yeah, I have a lot of friends. You know, a lot of them are hard to keep in touch with because they still work and I'm I was always the mom um at my previous job so you know they're, they're young and they have kids and but we still keep together you know talk together and keep in touch as much as we can but yeah my friends um are awesome yeah are awesome. and it can you can tell I mean it's so genuine and pure and you're always going to meet people even meeting new um women who've had breast cancer and who are now flat okay. like I've even seen that on your page yeah and Debbie that is advocacy I know I we have. I'm, I'm not one of those big um, advocacy advocacy people that you have usually on your. And I don't own an LCC, and I'm not a doctor. I'm just it's okay. <laughs> you are just you, I'm but just within me. that, you are telling your story and you're loving on people, and that's what I love about you. Like you really love on people, and that's part of what we do as advocates. That's that's an advocate. Like right. we, we love each other, we support each other, we share the information that we have and we know. So thank you for your service. I know um, <laughs> my service. Oh, and you too. You're the one that has a lot of things going on and you help a lot of people. So I I feel very fortunate that I'm here talking yeah. about stuff. I can't wait. My trip. So I call it my trip. Your trip. I don't, oh, so I don't that's call it I don't call it my journey. I call okay. it my trip. Oh, okay. I don't well, know. No, that's fine. We're going to get into that too. So, <laughs> so before you were diagnosed with um, having breast cancer, what was life like for you then? Like leading up to like, how, how was everything going in your life? How old were you? How was everything just going? I was, I was 63 when, I, well, I've, like I said, I've been working for the same person 
for like 25 years and or over 25 years. So I worked, you know, my husband and I both were working and we had the house in the Outer Banks and we had that as a, um, a rental. We went down there as much as we could and we had family there and friends there. And, um, you know, it was just at the at then it was just a lot of work you know, housework, yard work, you know, keeping up your house. And the weekends, we tried to have as much fun as we could. But um, it's it was just like most people, mostly working, you know, on every every day. So right. we used to have two Bichons earlier. Um, they passed away before I was diagnosed with cancer. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it was just mostly work, work and trying to have fun on the weekend. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay so y'all were just living your life like every day and just yes. enjoying your life. Right. So as much as, much as we point, could. Right. As much as we could. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, did you have a family history of breast cancer or anything, any type of cancer in your family? No, no. When I was diagnosed, um, I did um, every genetic testing. My insurance covered every genetic testing on the list and I got them all tested. Nothing came back. Nothing. So came they back. don't know. And it, cancer doesn't run in my family. So okay. the only cancer that ran, run, ran or runs, my mm -hmm. my um, grandfather, who's since passed away, was um, colon cancer. Okay. Um, but no, no breast cancer. And no. OK, so you're like being around it. You didn't have that history of being around no. anyone in the family. No. Mm -mm. So kind of explain to us, you know, life is going mm -hmm. on. You're working hard. You're enjoying life. You're 63 and enjoying life. And what happened? Like, what did, did you discover a lump? Did you just go for your regular mammogram? Explain to us what happened. How'd you feel? Yeah, I, I, oh. I had to had a marker put in like two years before I had um, gone and found this. And so when I went to get my mammogram, you know, that's why they put the marker in. So, cause there was a mass there, but it was malignant. So they put a marker there. So the next mammogram you have, they can measure it by the marker, how big the mass has grown. So it grew. Plus there was another one. So I never had any symptoms. I did notice that when I raised my hand, mm -hmm. my arm above my head, my nipple would invert. Mm. Um, I kind of thought, but I didn't feel anything. I didn't hurt. I didn't feel a lump or anything. So, but I found out through the mammogram and then a biopsy. And then um, I had a sonogram. Well, I had a, a mammogram, then a sonogram, then I had a biopsy. And uh, that's when it came back um, as cancerous. So um, my OBGYN had um, uh, suggested what um, surgeon oncologist group I go to, mm -hmm. and it was Virginia cancer specialists. So I went to them and, um, right away, I got the most amazing doctor surgeon. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I should say his name, but he was awesome. Virginia cancer specialist. <clears throat> he, um, ordered all these, um, um, tests that I had to have done. And he said, you know, let's just give you an MRI to make sure everything else is okay. Right. So when I had an MRI, they discovered now the mammogram didn't, discover it the um, sonogram didn't discover it but the MRI discovered that I also had a mass in my right breast mm. so I have dense breasts so mm. a lot of times dense breasts don't show up you know you've, right. you've heard that before I and in, Virgi yeah. in Virginia um our oncologist or excuse me our um gynecologists are mm -hmm. supposed to reveal that we have dense breasts mm -hmm. so we are aware that um you know, it might be harder for, you know, the sonograms or the mammograms to show right. that you actually have, because dense breasts show up as white mm -hmm. and cancer also shows up as white. So, but anyway, that's how I found out. And um, wow. yeah, Virginia cancer specialist was like that. They got everything running within a month when I was diagnosed. I had my port put in. I went through all my schedule, all my pre-op Mm -hmm. work had my port put in went through all the blood blood work and mri and bone scan to see if it had spread anywhere else and within a month of being diagnosed i had my first chemo treatment wow yeah so i want to go back just a little bit because i did hear you state that two years prior you had a marker put in yeah so what exactly happened you said there was a tumor but it was it malignant or it was benign at that point it was benign yeah right but there was only one show one. Okay. So they went in, they figured it out. It was benign. Then they put the marker in 
And then from there, of course, you went back and that's when you found the other. Okay. I just wanted to make for sure yes. that, yeah. um, we that there was another one. So having the markers put in is very important, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's yeah. very important because that way usually it can go back to that if it had grown. So you say right. that yours had grown, plus they found an additional one. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. So they did move quick within a month. That's very. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you're right about the dense tissue. I'm glad you brought that up because now doctors are supposed to let us know it's been mm -hmm. a now, but, and they're supposed, you, you may or may not be able to get um, an ultrasound. It depends on your insurance, but it, the hospital will, but it depends on insurance. Yeah. And that's a problem. Parents. I always thought, you know, I used to tell my husband all the time is like, why did they put me through the sonogram and why'd they put me through um, waiting? And then my, on my surgeon, thought, mm -hmm. well, why don't we just do an MRI to make sure that nothing else is, meant, meant, is missed because you have dense breasts. So it's right. like, why does the insurance company, if you have dense breasts, why don't they just skip all that? I mean, I know MRIs are expensive, but in the long run, maybe you're really be saving money if you just skip over and have the MRI since you have just dense breasts. Because mm -hmm. if I didn't have that, I don't know if I would have chosen to have a double mastectomy. Right. You're right. And, you know, it's saving lives now, but it's the insurance company. A lot of times it's them. It's not necessarily the doctors, which is sad. So like they make us do step one, two, three, and right. then four or five. <laughs> um, so you have that done and you have your report. And what do you, can you share what your actual diagnosis was when the report came back? I have, um, <clears throat> it's called invasive lobular carcinoma. And I had stage two, um, you know, I, I'm so bad with the reports. Stage oh, two. Okay. It was stage okay. two. But invasive carcinoma, invasive um, lobular carcinoma. I remember when I got the call, I was at work. The only thing I remember hearing the nurse practitioner of my um, surgeon say was that it's very invasive. That's all I kept hearing. Invasive, invasive. Oh my gosh, invasive. We all know what that word means. So that's why they move so quickly to okay. get all my tests done because, and I had chemo first mm -hmm. and a lot of my friends were asking me, you know, why are you having chemo first? Why don't you have your surgery first? Well, the chemo that I was on was, um, I had six rounds of chemo and it was called TCHP. And mm -hmm. my, my, actually my oncologist was in the same practice as my surgeon, surgeon. Mm -hmm. So it was like a one-stop shopping, um, office. It was awesome. They were, they were just great. I mean, they, they treated my husband and I both like we were part of them, hugs right. and everything. It was just really awesome. So if anybody lives in the Virginia area, uh, Virginia cancer specialist is wow. the place you need to go. I mean, it was just awesome. But um, what was I getting? What was I talking about? Now I get off track. Um, You're fine. You were just saying about how that a lot of people thought that like, why did you have your oh, first? chemo? Mm -hmm. My husband's yelling in the background. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We're sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, I had chemo first and my, my surgeon told me, well, and my oncologist told me, mm -hmm. um, you're going to have three. So by uh, a number round two, HER2 is <laughs> telling me you're right, hon. I had HER2 positive. That's yeah, that's the big thing. I, I left out the big thing. So I had okay. invasive lobular carcinoma, HER2 positive, which okay, means so hormone you driven. Positive. Right. HER2 positive, which is hormone driven. Mm -hmm. And that's another reason why I had to have chemo first. And so my oncologist and my surgeon told me that, you know, your well, my oncologist told me your hair is going to start falling out round two. Well, it did. And my surgeon told me by, by round three, after you have round three of chemo, we're going to bring you back in and do a sonogram. And hopefully the chemo would have killed some of the, the, the masses. Well, the smaller mass that I didn't know I had until I had my, my, my mammogram again was gone. My second one, the bigger one was cut was half. It had shrunk in half. Oh, wow. So the chemo was working. Wow. So chemo was working. So I kind of want to back you up a lot to the point of when you found out, because I heard you say, you know, say that all you heard was invasive, right? And the reason why I'm bringing you back to that point is because a lot of people, I, I'm not gonna say they, some people understand, some people don't. And it's not just about can't like, it could be any disease or anything that happens to us in that moment 
of getting that phone call, it's like our world. I know for me, it felt like my world went completely upside down. All I heard was carcinoma. Yeah. Um, so if you, if you don't mind, um, can you share some of the feelings and some of the things that was going on in that moment? Well, I was in my boss's office. It was on a trip and um, Miranda was the name of the um, nurse um, practitioner that not nurse practitioner, nurse navigator that mm -hmm. was for my surgeon. And I had um, that worked with my surgeon. I had met her before. She's very sweet. So she called me because I told them they could call me at work. Um, so my boss wasn't there. So I, <laughs> I went in his office and all I could find were those little yellow stickies. So I'm writing cool. everything on these little tiny yellow stickies, like tearing them off and writing more and tearing them mm -hmm. off. And you know, all I kept hearing was invasive. And, you know, I was just, um, I don't know, I was just, it's weird, because you just want to try to take down all the information you can. And then when I hung up the phone, my boss wasn't there, I was in his office, my the closest two friends I had at work at that at this job weren't there. Mm. So I, <laughs> I walked out of my boss's office, and I walked into this senior management team's um, office. His name is, was Andrew. He was on the phone. And he could tell by the look on my face, and then I better hang up. And he hung up, and I said, I have breast cancer. That's all oh. I had. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I just had to tell right. someone, you know? And he was, you know, by the time I went to the front of the office, he had already called my boss, and my boss was calling me. So, and then, you know, I, 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 I. I drove home and, you know, I, I called my husband and told him and he was like, oh, let me come pick you up at work. And I'm like, oh. no, I don't live that far from where I was working. And I was like, no, I'm fine. And, you know, driving home was, I don't remember driving home, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, then it just, it just went so fast. I mean, thank goodness, Virginia Cancer Specials just, um, you know, got me in, explained things to me. I went to, my husband and I went to a, um, a, I don't forget what it was called. A, it was a session for people that was going to have surgery. Okay. And it was talking about the port being put in it was a class put through mm -hmm. Nova healthcare. And, you know, that was very helpful. Um, kind of scary, but at least she right. knew what was going to be happening. But yeah, that whole day was like, I don't even remember what I did when I got home. I guess I cried. I'm sure I cried. My yeah. husband cried. Um, but yeah, it was, um, it was uh, like a fog. Yeah. A lot of people say like their world just stood still. Yeah. Stop. It just stopped and you feel numb. I know I felt completely numb. And then yeah. I went through a ton of different emotions. Yeah. I got mad and I got, yeah. you know, why is this happening to me? You know, why? You right. Know, how did I get this? Was it deodorant? You know, then you start thinking about, mm -hmm. did I wear underwire bras? Was that it? You know, you start thinking all these crazy things and then, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I just like was in a fog. Yeah. So you go through the treatment and during treatment, because like you stated, it went fast. And sometimes when it goes fast, I don't know how you felt, but sometimes you really don't have a moment to really think sometimes the process because you're moving so fast. How was that for you, even going through treatment? Did it move so fast that you just couldn't really gather your thought? You just went with the flow or were you able to take time to really process and journal or do whatever you did to comfort yourself? I did take, I did take notes and I, every day, especially after chemo, how I felt the day of chemo, how I felt the day of surgery. And, um, and, you know, my, my husband was uh, there all the time and I had a lot of friends behind me and, and I continued to work the whole time. So my boss gave me that privilege to, um, come to work if I wanted to, or work from home. And, you know, there were times when I went to work and mm, my husband would drop me off and maybe I was only there an hour because I didn't think I was as good as I thought I was. And then I'd come home and, um, it's, it's, it was, it, I don't know, Christine, I don't know what to say. I mean, it was like, I was all over the place. I mean, I really was, I had time to think about, um, going to chemo and I hated that port, but my surgeon told me that's, you're going to be your best friend. And, and once my husband would put that stuff on it, you know, before you go to numb it. And then once I got to chemo and the <clears throat> nurse would poke me with the needle, I was fine. And every time we would go for chemo, I would go for chemo. My husband made a, you know, he's a jokester kind of sort of, we would dress up, he would dress me up or we, I would scenes like one time I was a road worker. One time, you know, I had the Avenger sign yes. and 
Yeah, so people, they would laugh at me. They'd be like, oh boy, what's she going to come like today? <laughs> so I kind of made fun of it, you know, and Kevin went to every um, chemo that I had until he couldn't go. Um, after chemo, after my surgery, I had to have, go through Cadsilo, which is an immunotherapy drug. Mm -hmm. I had 14 rounds of that and that became um, COVID. So he couldn't go to all of those. But mm -hmm. the chemo, to answer your question, I mean, I just... Oh, you know, it was like every three weeks. So, um, you know, you had chemo or I'd have chemo and I mean, I always had it on Thursday. There were a couple of times when I couldn't mm -hmm. have it because my blood count was really low. So mm -hmm. before I went to get my, my, um, my, um, treatment, I would always have to have a blood test done and then they would do this quick blood test, you know, and if your blood count was low, you couldn't have chemo. So there were a couple of times that happened. But I just, you know, the nurses were so nice and they had TVs and you could take your, you know, stuff. They offered stuff to drink and I never really got, took advantage of that, but they were all very sweet. And you got to know people, um, you know, from seeing them and not everybody there was there for just breast cancer. They were mm -hmm. there for, you know, other things too. So you never really knew what anybody was there for. But I used to get very sad when I went there because some people were really sick. Right. Right. And well, I did good. I did good. I don't want to cry. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Round three was when I started feeling bad. Right. And yeah. this is, this is your story. And that's something that I always want guests to know. This is your story. So therefore, if you cry, it's okay. If you laugh, it's okay. Um, this is your oh, story. Yeah. And because it's your story, it's personal, right? Yeah. And because it's personal, we have emotion and that that's fine. People need to see that because yeah. it's not always roses. And it's not always, like you say, you dressed up in character because it helped you. And it was, it made it fun for you. But yeah. at the same time, we have some days that it's low. It's oh, low, yeah. You know, yeah. and we have times where we talk about it and we get emotional and that's fine. It's part of it. And that's yeah. why I want this to be a safe place. For whoever comes on that if you need to cry cry if you can't remember something it's okay um, oh yeah even when you were just talking about like for instance well I, I don't know and sometimes we have gone through certain parts we don't know how to even describe it because it was just so crazy you know like it was just right. like what's going on it's like how do you even put that into words how do we articulate right. that right. um and so yeah so it's it's so okay it's so okay <laughs> To cry and usually I'm up here crying half the time I know I've seen you <laughs> it's it's I okay I, I know it's okay to cry but it's just kind yeah. Of, um, yeah yeah you're so pretty oh well you're so sweet thank you <laughs> so when you so I want to also touch on something because I I know certain parts of your story and what was so comforting to me to hear about your story is your age and how they allowed you, they told you your treatment plan, they gave you options because so many people, of course, there is racism out here, there's sexism out here, but there's also ageism. Right, and right. I've Most definitely seen people who were not given the option to have certain treatment plans, they weren't even offered. They right. wanted maybe a double mastectomy or something to avoid this or that. They weren't even offered and they could have because they were healthy enough. But the, right. it wasn't even on the table. So can you explain to me, was it automatically offered or did you study something and come back with questions or they just offered what you could have? Because you did have, you know, well, I'll let you tell your story, but how did that happen for you? Well, I don't remember Dr. Vargas, you know, he, he took Kevin and I in a room together and, you know, he drew pictures of, you know, my breast and blah, blah, blah. And, and he, I don't remember if he, you know, he never, as far as I remember, he never mentioned implants, which I already knew what I wanted. I had read about um, implants and I had read, I joined a bunch of, as you know, how many places are out there on Facebook. Right. right away I joined, went out there and joined all these things. And of course my surgeon said, and oncologist, don't read that, you know, but I did. And then when I started telling him what I wanted, he said, oh, I can tell you've been reading. And I don't remember him saying anything about implants. I just told him, I want you to make me as flat as possible. Mm. And my insurance, <laughs> excuse me, my insurance had okayed me to get my right breast removed because I had an existing tumor there, which right. more than likely would have probably, and I didn't want to go through second surgery. So I'm mm -hmm. like, I mean, I, I 
never, you know, I don't need these things anymore, really. So just, you know, I'm not going to have them just hoping that I won't die from cancer. So right. just get rid of it. And he was like, he asked me, and as soon as I said that, he said to me, with my husband there, mm -hmm. if that's what you want, that's fine. Your healing process will be much quicker. Mm. That's all he said. And he asked me, I, I believe it was two other times during the course before I had my surgery. Are you sure this is what you want? Wow. And do you want to have a plastic surgeon? And I said, no. And I didn't have a plastic surgeon. And he did an awesome job. Right. Because you, you're you aesthetic flat. You have yeah. aesthetic flat closure, correct? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's you can't even hardly see my scar. Well, I went to my doctor's appointment. I didn't see him. I wish I would have. Mm -hmm. He was not there. But I saw the nurse practitioner and um, his nurse. I mean, mm -hmm. his nurse. And um, she was like, I just, he just did such a good job. He did. He did an oh. awesome job. Yeah. And I just love the fact that he honored you. And he did. what you wanted. And he I mean, was, he ahead. was the most, he was old, what, what I called old school doctor. Mm -hmm. When I went to get my port put in at the hospital, he jumped, jumped up on the gurney. He said a prayer. And when I went to do my, 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 um, surgery, you know, Kevin was there on, you know, in the room with me, he said a prayer that would make you cry. Just so mm -hmm. lovely. I mean, he was so very religious, very, calming very supportive and always treated and there's another lady on one of the sites i'm sorry i'm going all over the place there was another there's another lady on one of our <laughs> one of our sites that you and i are both on um i don't want to say her name but um she asked me who did your surgery because i showed her my picture mm -hmm. and she actually chose him she didn't choose the same oncologist but she went to dr vargas and she was very happy with what he did too so that's nice yeah. yeah, because that that does not happen often. And as you know, no. some people don't even get aesthetic flat closure if, when they ask for it. And when they show pictures of it, they still come out looking totally different than what they had asked for. So, And that is just horrible. That is just, is. that's just, I don't know how any doctor could leave a woman the way some of them do. It's right. just not fair. It's and and then you feel stuck. Then you have to deal with the insurance companies. Can I get a revision? And you know, who do I get now? Maybe I have to get a plastic surgeon. You know, because the trust yeah. becomes obsolete after someone oh, yeah. does that to you. That's um, why if you live in Virginia, go to Virginia Cancer Specialists. They, need, they <laughs> I, I need to tell them like y'all need to make sure she's on a commercial because. <laughs> Oh, I told Mary, I told Mary, I said, I'm going to do this webinar. I called it webinar with my friend, who's a very an awesome cancer advocate. And I'm going to talk about you guys. And she goes, okay, fine. Yeah. You know, okay, fine. So I, I actually did want to send them and I haven't done it yet. I think I asked you in a, in a text who I could get, or maybe I ask Anna, maybe I ask Anna who I could get aesthetic flat closure information from, because I would like to send it to him because I think he should be added to that doctor list. Oh, I can send that to you. I know. Yeah. What yeah. I, I really think he should be. And, and I looked when I was there, I looked around the office to see if they had anything, you know, the flyers they have out there. Mm -hmm. They didn't have anything. Yeah. Not putting on a shirt is the organization that has. I all thought that. so. Yep. Yeah. Thought they have so. all that information. I thought so. So, yeah. So you, you got through your chemo. <laughs> you had a lot of support. I know your husband's been 100% supportive of your friends. Yeah. And, and when you did that, now, did you have to go through radiation? No, thank goodness. Okay. The radiation freaked me out. I was so, ha you know, I had, um, during my surgery, I had, um, you know, they light up your lymph nodes and if okay. anything shows. So they tested one and under my left arm and it came back negative. So no, I, mm. I just had to, when having chemo, I ended up having osteopenia. So, mm -hmm. um, I had to have, um, for every six months, for three years, I had to have zomato treatments, which is a treatment to um, for your for your bones. For your bones. So mm -hmm. I had that, but I never had chemo. I had Cadzilla, okay. uh, twelve rounds of Cadzilla, which is an immune fourteen rounds of Cadzilla, which is an immunotherapy, and then after that, I got my port taken out. Wow. So I don't have a port. I know wow. some people still have their right. port, and I'm I'm glad I don't. I hated that thing, <laughs> but it was my savior. Yeah. Now explain to me, because we can call whatever we want to call, whatever. You said you call it your trip. My trip. Explain that, if you don't mind. I don't want to say journey. For me, journey sounds like something that's flowing. 
sorry, flowing through the hills and you're seeing beautiful things. Mm. I didn't think of it that way. Yeah, it okay. was my trip. I'm not saying it was a bad trip. It was just a trip. <laughs> I like that though. I didn't even think, yeah, because if you think a journey, it may seem very like light and- Yeah, rolling like, through the hills, yeah, green trees. Cool. But a trip yes. can either be good, bad, or a little in the middle. It was so, my trip. Yeah. <laughs> That's my trip. I don't even know if I ever really said that to anybody before. Actually, I said it to one of my girlfriends today in a text, but yeah, my trip. I don't okay. like, and I see everybody say journey and you got yeah. this and you know what, that you got this. It's, it's, you know, people don't really know what to say. Some people don't say anything mm -hmm. when you have, find out you have cancer, you lose a lot of friends. Um, right. I didn't lose many friends. I just, some friends were just, um, they didn't know what to say and I get it. Because uh, it's very hard and sometimes people can't handle it and they don't want to see you sick and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, my trip. Okay. Was my trip. So you didn't lose that many friends, but some. No, yeah. no. Some, some of them. I didn't actually, I shouldn't say that. I didn't lose any friends. Okay. Good. I just found out who could real I could really rely on, put mm -hmm. it that way. And I, that's fine too. They're still my friends. Yep. Everyone's it's still my friends. I call it, I have, I may have not lost friends, but dynamic of friendship may have changed and there may be in a different level of friendship right like right. you stated like I might can trust this person with a certain amount of information so I would say maybe you're like my inner inner circle friend and then maybe yeah. kind of like right well I don't even know for me if it's like I can trust them because I know who I can trust and not right. but I know now who can't handle sickness yeah and that's yeah. fine mm -hmm. that's fine I get it I get yeah. it it's hard. Um, it is hard. And it's not that they're, I think some people feel like, oh, well, such as they're trying to be selfish. And it's like, no, because they just may not know how to handle it. They, they, they may not know what to say. They may be scared, literally. I know some right. people literally scared of seeing someone sick. So, right. it, and you don't never know what anyone's been through with their right. own exactly. family members and their trauma. Yes. So yes. yeah, I, I totally agree with that. So you get through, well, you gone through this and within it was there anything any takeaways that you could um share with people about your trip like with your <laughs> trip with cancer can you share anything that maybe you've learned that you want to share with anyone mm, I think um now I I think more of um you know, when you're young, you don't ever think about being 50 mm -hmm. or whatever. Now, now since having cancer, and I don't want to sound like, oh, she had cancer. You know, some people are like, oh, she just keeps saying she had cancer. Well, but you did. I think what I mean, not trying, to be funny. <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny, but I mean, you did. But you know what I mean? When, once you <laughs> have did. something that could possibly kill you, mm -hmm. you think that you you change your a lot of your values change, a lot of your way you want to do things change. Um, I think I've become and Kevin can tell you this, I'm not one that has patience, but I have become more patient. Um, he's probably laughing downstairs, but whatever. Um, and I, I look at life like totally different, you know, um, like, um, it's, I'm, I'm more, um, relaxed and not so I'm, I'm a hyper person anyway. And I'm, I, I'm not like, it's gotta be done today or it's, you know, I got to finish this or, you know, sure. That's different when you're working. And I'm, like I said, I only work part-time, so it's mm -hmm. not so bad, but just the way things are, things around the house and, you know, I'm good. I need to do this, but it doesn't really matter. It can be done. You know, that I've, I've, I think I've, um, gotten that from being sick and knowing mm -hmm. what you know when you're when you're laying in bed after you have chemo for me it was like I had chemo on Thursday I didn't feel good till like the next Wednesday mm -hmm. so you lay around because you're just so tired and after number three like I said it goes down and down and down my oncologist was right on point when she said it gets worse you know it's mm -hmm. a it's, it's more you more chemo you have the worse you're going to feel you're laying around and you're thinking, you know, you're laying in bed and you know, your husband's busy doing stuff and you're too tired to call your friends and you just lay there and think, you know, you think and think. So it's, it's, it's a way of um, just changing because you have time to think about things. That makes mm -hmm. sense. It definitely does because it will stop you in your tracks and yeah. make you, it, you can gain a new perspective right? That's, of your that's overall it. life. Right. Um, for some people, they 
they gain negative because they take it and it's a negative experience for them. And that's how they continue to perceive it. Or then you have some people it's like, okay, I made it through this. So my perspective has changed about how I'm going to live life. How am I going right. to live maybe a little bit more positively or um, not take things so serious all the time? I think we all kind of learn different things right. through this, this trip. And I, mean, I can, I mean, that's going to be your new thing. <laughs> that's my um, new word. <laughs> And I can understand people that feel that way because, I mean, for me, I feel like based on what I know from what other people have told me through the Facebook groups or listening to your your story, your website, um, I had it easy. I had a good doctor. I had a good, um, a good um, everything was one-stop shopping and everyone was very nice. And, you know, my insurance, thank goodness I had, you know, a lot of people don't have all that. So right. being being negative and, you know, I can understand how they kind of feel like that. It's just a shame that you don't get all the help that you really need to get. I mean, like right. one thing I did want to bring up and, and I don't know if every cancer, um, like my, like I keep saying, Virginia mm -hmm. cancer specialist was one stop shopping. They had, I got, they gave me information about getting free massages when I was with the oh. breast cancer massage, massage person, free cancer massages. I got, um, what else did Kevin and I, we went through the, after I had chemo, I went through or finished everything. I went through a um, survivorship class, which I hated mm -hmm. that name. I'm like survivorship. That's horrible. That sounds like, okay, you serve, am I going to die or, you know, but right. it was like life, life without cancer and what you can do eating different, blah, 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 blah. So I think that a lot of people that may not know if their oncologist or their surgeon offer mm -hmm these kinds of things they right. should ask they should ask yep yeah yep that's so true because a lot of people i'm finding um well it seems like you definitely went to like a breast center but they call it where it's sort of like it, it was awesome it wasn't it was right it was like a yeah. breast center where it was like a one-stop shop yeah and some places aren't necessarily mm -hmm. like that it's more like oh my oncologist is here my breast surgeon's right. over here right um plastic surgeon may be somewhere else but when you have a breast center and they specialize, that's all they do. They have so many other, you know, avenues, but even your breast surgeon may have a social worker that's there, but a lot of people don't know that they know about the nurse navigators, yes. but it's not always about the social workers that are on nice. staff or some of the, like you stated, the survivorship classes because the oh, yeah. places do, um, yeah. So yeah, that's very good information for everyone. They should ask. I mean, it doesn't hurt to yeah. ask, right? Yeah. Right. And if they can't, I'm sure they can point in to some direction, right. um, group or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. So now, what is life like now with you? And since you've gone through everything, we've heard the lesson, but what, just how is life for you? It's more calm. Um, I only work part-time now and, um, my husband's hopefully going to retire soon. So then we can do more fun things together and hopefully move to Florida quicker than, than it's going now. <laughs> um, but yeah, it'll happen when it happens, but, um, no, I'm, I mean, I still like to garden, still like to, you know, be with my friends when I can. And, um, I, since I, I had a really good friend <laughs> that lived two doors down that we were uh -huh. really, really close and hung out all the time while well, she moved to North Carolina. So now I'm like more of a homebody, you know, I'm doing my own thing at home and I like, I do like to sew. I got a really nice sewing machine. That's like, it's kind of scary. It does all these <laughs> things automatic, which <laughs> I need to learn. So I bought some material. I'm hoping to sew some, you know, make some dresses and I have sewn a couple things. Um, so I'm just, I'm just more calm. I'm more of a homebody actually now. Yeah, um, I but really you, am. And that's and, fine. And regardless of what you want to believe, you are very active in our groups. Um, yeah, you're more active than I am because I have so many well, you're connected to, so I'm trying to keep up, but you are like, you even plan. So y'all don't let her fool you. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> She'll sit here all day and be like, no, no, no. You may not think <laughs> that, but you do. Cause I've seen you coordinate dinners for us and like a meeting for us, even 
which was interesting. Shirley and I. Okay, let I me show you the picture. But she's going to show a picture. She made for sure she wanted to show. I you. forgot to give you this picture. And of course, you. this was a year ago. I don't know. Yes. Can you see it? That was us when we went to Richmond. Yep. Can't can't see very good. Yeah, but Shirley was on. Shirley was on as a guest before, like around December. So yeah, yeah Shirley, and that's the first. This is the first day that we all met in person. Yep. And it was so interesting. So it shows you how small the world is and everything within the breast cancer community. Because I I think you thought that Shirley and I knew each other first. Yeah. But yeah. in actuality, you and Shirley knew each other first. Yeah. Long and time then, ago. Yeah. yeah. And then I came in through a whole you know, other group. <laughs> you meet so many people online and you get to, you know, some people want to really connect with you and you go back and forth and some people you don't, but every once in a while you'll see their, their post and, you know, it's, it's nice. It's really nice. And it, it there's so many groups that um, you feel free and safe to talk mm -hmm. about stuff that, you know, maybe you wouldn't even want to talk about on this, you know, right. But um, right. yeah, there's a lot of support out there. That's for sure. And, and that's one thing that a lot of people years ago didn't have. So right. something like this is awesome because I, I don't know, hopefully I said something that somebody will get out of it, but sure. um, it's, it's important to hear other people's stories for sure, because yep. not everybody's the same. Yep. Everybody's yeah. story means something different to right. other people and to right. have various representation as far as race, gender, age, all that plays a part because it, it makes someone more, it makes a person relatable for their situation. So yeah. that's why I was like, oh, I got to get her up here. <laughs> I wish Kevin would have come on here. He would have been a good, um, he should have, he was, he he was can... in the background. No, <laughs> he, no. <laughs> No, he'll, he'll be, he'll do something silly. Maybe you could get, <laughs> maybe you could get him on here to talk about how it was to be my caretaker. Yes. Or then again, maybe I wouldn't want you to know. <laughs> no, he made no, it fun. That would he made be it, fun. He made it fun. He made it fun. That's good. Yeah. I yeah. love how he dressed you up. That was so <laughs> cute. When I seen those pictures, I was like, did she think of that or not? So thank you for explaining because I was wondering. Oh, no, I could have showed you some, some right before I had my surgery. I think it, maybe it was even when I was having chemo. I had, I remember my face was really red because, you know, when you go through that, you're, you get all kinds of weird stuff oh. happening to your skin, your eyes. And he had, it was so cute. He had these army men on my chest <laughs> and had the caption saying they're killing chemo. <laughs> something like that I don't know it's but if he made it fun that would be like okay so what's what am I doing before I go to chemo today <laughs> what am I dressing up as you know what's our theme for today yeah the theme <laughs> that's right that's right oh so he, he made that even more of a trip for you though for real exactly that's why <laughs> really kids say journey I mean journey's fine and I get it most yeah. people say journey but to me journey means I swear it's like going down I don't know through the woods and you see a little pond on the side with ducks you know wasn't that for me yeah yeah that is so <laughs> that is so hilarious mm -hmm. so you chose a song yes first and foremost do you have anything else that you want to share with everyone anything, anything really is pressing on your heart um so I know a lot of people when they get double mastectomies there's a lot of groups that don't um think it's right that you should wear foobs, which are fake boobs. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to bring that up. I mean, I know right. when I went through it, I don't even know how I got these, but I've got free knicker knockers, knitted oh, knockers. I knitted have knockers. Um, yeah, but the knicker knockers. Knitted yes. knockers. Knit, knitting. So basically it's knit, knit knockers, but anyhow, knitted. they knitted. knit. Yes. yes. But <laughs> like knick it, knick it, knick it. It sounds almost like naked if you look at the word, but anyhow, and say it. But yeah. basically, they crochet us these boobs. boobs. Um, <laughs> so knitting knockers, knitting knockers. That's what it is. Knitting. Did you ever get any? Yes, I did. I got some, <laughs> but they were late. So mine I were like, mine were like, I put them in a regular bra. I thought, well, I kept a couple of my bras without underwire because uh -huh. I kept thinking underwire is what gave me cancer. But <laughs> so I put them in and I'm like, after going flat for a while, then you put these big boobs in. You're like, oh no, they're, my boobs were that big. Really? No, I can't wear those. But it's they, were so cute. they were too big. I'm glad you said that because they, I'm going to see if I can get somebody up 
um, from that organization up here. But it's yeah. so sweet. They knit it's very our sweet. boobs and we can tell them what size we right. want. And then they stuff it with cotton. Now mine got were late because it was during COVID. So they were um, like, they were back order. They wanted to make sure everything was clean and all that kind of good stuff. So, but yeah, it's people who volunteer to make us these things. Right, and right. Really sweet. And right. Um, yeah, I got, you can get any color. Mine were like, oh my gosh, these things are huge. <laughs> then I started taking some of the stuffing out. I'm like, and trying to <laughs> then I thought, well, actually, I, I meant to take it to our last luncheon to see if uh -huh. somebody wanted them. And then I forgot. Then I thought, well, I don't know. I'll keep them. Maybe I'll take more stuffing out. But I do. I do wear boobs sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, you know, I just throwing that in. Don't feel bad if you want to wear boobs. I mean, it's it's fine. You do what you want to do. Most of the times I don't have anything. And then when I put those things on, it's like, oh, I can't wait to take them off. That is hot. I've gotten, so I, when I wear mine, which is very rarely, I think I can count on one hand how often I've worn my prosthetics. That's the other, you know, it's just either prosthetics or like the um, knitting knockers, whatever. Some people <laughs> put stock uh, socks. I mean, you know, you have different people who use different things. But I was like, I can't wear these. It's too yeah. hot. Like, I'm like, yeah. how do I survive with breasts? <laughs> excuse me. Yeah. I, I mean, once you, once you get used to, <laughs> excuse me, not yeah, wearing them, you don't want to wear them. Yeah. So. Yep. But sometimes when you're going out or certain shirts, mm -hmm. it does look better because <laughs> no offense to anybody, but I'm talking about myself. All you see is your belly, you know, if you don't have. Yeah. Yeah. So it does yeah. make you feel better sometimes. It does. Cause it'll kind of like even out proportion your shape for certain things if you want to but you don't have to and that's yeah. also I'm glad you brought up about um foods because some people try to make people feel bad for having implants exactly yeah right exactly and it's mm -hmm. like it's a choice it's what you choose right um, yeah so thank you for that because okay I, that, that was you asked me what I and I, I have notes up here on my about my computer thinking about so I wouldn't forget because I know how I am and I saw knitted knockers. So yeah. And the, uh, the place I went through for the free massages was, and I don't know if they do it everywhere, mm -hmm. but it was called heal. Well, heal well.org. Now, if it's a .org, I would think that maybe they're all over. So if mm -hmm. someone would want to look into that, maybe you could find, that's where I got my free three free massages and they were awesome. Oh. It was a breast can. It was so you can have um, massages, but if you have, you know, if you're a breast cancer survivor and you're flat or whatever, these people are breast cancer masseuses. Oh. So I'm oh, stuck. nice. So they probably, so do they also work with um, like lymphedema? Probably. Yeah. Okay. Probably. I didn't have that. Thank goodness. The only thing that I had after, and I still have, and it's from chemo, is I have neuropathy in my fingers mm. and my feet. My feet are probably... 80% of the time numb. Learning okay. how to walk with sandals was kind of funny. Because <laughs> I had to hold on to them with my toes. <laughs> oh, did you couldn't feel? Okay. <laughs> it makes kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. So, yeah. Is there, and is that everything that you want to share? That's everything. I have everything on my notes. Yeah. Bone scan. I had a bone <laughs> scan, found out I had zoomata. Yeah. I had to take a zoom. Yeah. I just wanted to point out things that I hadn't heard anybody else say. Right. So right. um, that's why I took no. notes, but no, that's it. <laughs> Do I have? You are so funny. Uh, <laughs> that's why I love hanging out with you. Um, <laughs> So where can people find you if they want to find Debbie and maybe they have a question because Debbie, now y'all, I know you can find her in any flat group pretty much, <laughs> <laughs> but where can people find you if they want to um, maybe ask you a question? And I've already, you've given me information, but if you could say it verbally, where people can it's find My you. email is dfees at verizon.net and my um, Instagram, it's the only two platforms I use besides Facebook. Um is Omal Beach Lady. That's my, that's my Instagram. Okay. Yep. All right. So and my, you oh, asked me ahead. about my, about my song. Yes. So before I went off on a tangent about oh, other things. That's okay. <laughs> that is, if you're an interview girl, you do what you do. <laughs> I'm here for support. <laughs> <laughs> so your song, which I love pink, but explain I do too. for us why you chose that song. And obviously I just told who the artist is, but explain to us why you chose the song, but also the name of the song. 
Um, so it's a song by Pink and the name of it is Turbulence. And it's from her last, I think she already has a couple of new songs out, but it's from her last CD album, whatever you want to call it. And the reason I chose that is because it's like happy moments and sad moments all combined together. And it's very, the I always listen to, and not only listen to the, 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 I listen mostly to the lyrics. That's what gets me if I like a song, but of course the music as well. But um, it's, it's like happy and sad all together, but it's very hopeful mm -hmm. and, um, you know, talks about, you know, overcoming things. And that's made me feel about, that made me think about how I felt when I was going through my chemo story, my chemo oh, trip. Your trip, turbulent trip. trip. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I chose that, that song. I, I have a lot of other songs and I think I told you, I almost chose one, one um, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I always sung that song when I was young to myself oh. all the time. Okay. But Turbulence is my song. Yes. And I see you went to her concert. I did. Yeah. Yep. Kevin took me, even though he's a good sport. He knows it was awesome. It was awesome. Nice. And so what's a word or some people even say a couple of words that can encourage people, a word that maybe someone's looking at some wounds that haven't healed yet. And it's very difficult for them as far as mentally and physically, or maybe they have scars that they have a hard time looking at as well. But what's a word? Why why would you choose it? Why have you chosen the word and explain to us why it means so much to you? My word's very simple. It's just hopeful. Mm -hmm. Hopeful. There's a lot of things you can be hopeful for. I mean, there was a lot of things when I was young, going through my childhood that wasn't the greatest. I always hoped that it would be better. I always hoped that I could do this. And I always hoped that I could be better or hope that I could one day have a nice house or mm -hmm. I just hope hopeful hopeful is my word hopeful means a lot to me in a lot of different ways nice well Miss Debbie I must say that for me <laughs> to you uh oh um, um <laughs> I don't know if I want to hear it <laughs> um honestly I've said it throughout the whole time community when I think of you I think of community when I think of you, I think of joy also, because when you get with your community, you're very joyful. Every picture that I have seen, and it's not, some people, you can look at them, it's like, dang, they're not really joyful. They're not really <laughs> having a good time right now. They're they're not, but they're putting on a smile, but you're actually genuinely joyful when you get with your community. And I love the fact how you build community, because even in some of the groups, if you, I think, I guess you're noticing like, oh, maybe we haven't met in a while, or maybe we haven't met at all. And it's right. like you gather these people together and come together. And I think for you to be able to identify that there's a need for a particular type of community, that says a lot. And it says a lot also how you have such a big community. Because even when I posted about you coming up here, as you know, people were like, oh, when you coming on, oh, they, you know, they love you. They <laughs> love you. And people just don't flock to people that they don't care about. They There's something about you. There's a light about you. There's a presence about you that builds a community around you. And that's well, something you. that doesn't happen often. That's a very rare quality. Everybody can't build. And it's not that you're even, I don't even think you're really trying. I think you're just sort of like, <laughs> I think, you know, we just need to get together. Yeah. You're building people within that. You're building people up, you're uplifting them. And so that's my word for you is like, continue to build these communities, continue to allow your voice to be heard Regardless if you believe it or not, you are an advocate. Um, <laughs> you do not, because a lot of times we see a certain people and it's like, no, they're really doing it. It's like, no, we're really yeah. doing it. Because yeah. advocacy is, like I stated earlier, is supporting each other, it's building people up, it's building community, it's giving information out. You do all of that and more. And the very first time I met you, I mean, just to hug you, it's just <laughs> your presence. You have a very good presence around you. And yes, I just hope you continue to build, which I'm sure you will, because it comes very natural to you. And I thank you for allowing me to be in your community. You're so sweet. I so. love you. I love you. <laughs> and we have to get together don't forget yes we do before shirley moves we have to get together right. before miss shirley moves to her next adventure yes journey her next journey her next trip <laughs> next trip
Okay, that's through. gonna be a that's gonna be a thing now. That's gonna okay. be our thing. Sorry, yep. we started it. So, <laughs> but yeah. So thank you all for watching another episode of Our Scars Speak. And remember, whenever you feel led to, no one's pressuring you to, but whenever you feel led to, share your story because our mental and our physical scars speak a story that can heal the wounds of another. And until next time, bye. And I love you. Bye, Christina. Bye. Thank you. Love you too. You're welcome. <laughs>